I'm Sal. I'm Beth. We're the Brewery Lovers, here to tell you everything you need to know about the beer judge certification program, not even close to everything. <laughs> We're going to tell you what we know, which isn't a whole lot, but it's a lot more now than it was a few months ago. Uh, back in the summer, sometime, uh, looking at the YouTube videos, and I'm just not happy at all with the words that are coming out of my mouth to describe the beers I'm tasting. Like, all I ever say is, this beer's really good. It's really dry. <laughs> They're all, they were all just off the hook. I mean, dry, smooth. That's nice. It's a little, um, it's a little ambery, lagery, almost. Not as dry as the others. Really clean, really dry. Which doesn't tell people a lot. <laughs> doesn't tell you a lot. <laughs> tells you it's good and dry. That's one thing. So I had this idea, got this idea in my head. Let's do the BJCP certification. Not because we want to be judges, but because we want to learn more about the, really the vocabulary of beer and how beer is supposed to be described and evaluated. And to Beth's credit, she said, yeah, let's do it after the kids get married. Yeah. That priority our, one. Priority one. That was our obviously a big focus of the of the fall. So mid October ish, we uh, kind of pulled the trigger. I guess the first thing you do is is create an account on the website, and then you start just gathering information. The, the, obviously, we had, I had this already. I hadn't printed it out. I had an excuse to print it. This, these are the style guidelines. You have to know the first 26? 26 categories. 26 categories. There's about three beers per category. So you do the math. That's a lot of beers that you have to know. This is the study guide. Um, probably can't see that, but I'll put it up later. Tabulated nicely with yes. pink post-it notes. Well, now. Beth's really good at that. Beth is a great <laughs> test preparer, preparer for studier, student. She's a, she's a scholar. <laughs> We both have college degrees, but hers was a lot harder than mine, let me tell you. So she really knows that knows this stuff. She was a wonderful study partner. Couldn't have done it without her. I had sort of a basic knowledge of how beer works, ingredients, technique. But almost all my knowledge is practical. Like, I know you're supposed to sparge at under 170 degrees. I'm not necessarily going to tell you exactly why. Uh, I know that if you met your mash temperature is lower, you'll have a more fermentable, drier beer. If your mesh temperature is higher, you'll have a less fermentable, more body beer. I don't know the science behind that. You do when you when you study this. It gets really crazy in depth and some just nutty, obscure <laughs> factoids about beer. <laughs> like how ethanol is produced. And but the one that I always say is now I know that when chlorine and chloramine combine with phenols, they make chlorophenols, which are really bad in your beer. I don't know why I needed to know that, but we know that for the test. You download all this stuff, you get as much of it as you can together, and there's books also that are recommended. Some of them you probably should read, like Palmer. Uh, I had read Michael Jackson a million, Michael Jackson's a million, Guide to the World's million Beers. years ago, so I kind of looked at that again. And the entrance exam is online, it's open book, you can have all this stuff in front of you. You can even you can use your computer, obviously, and, and look the styles up. but. It's like a time thing. It's a crunch. Every tell you it's tell the numbers. It's 180 questions to be completed in 60 minutes. Right, so you have to do three questions a minute. Right. So you can, in theory, look things up, but there is no time. There's no you time. You have to have a lot of it committed to memory. And you have to know exactly where to look when you do look stuff up. And we're going to give you some tips on that. Um, basically, we both flunked the online exam once. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> it's okay. That's what I expected. We're f <laughs> <laughs> That was a real wake-up call because you don't really know what that test is going to be like until you take it. That's going to be a tip a little bit later. You'll get that um, wake-up call like, oh, my God. Are we going to be able to pull this off? <laughs> yeah. I mean, these are two people that are pretty good students, pretty good at retaining knowledge, studying, and know a lot about beer. And we were like, oh, my God. Like, it was crashed and burned. 
uh, in both in the uh, practice exams and then the real one. I, I was there was a couple sleepless nights. I didn't think I didn't think we were going to do it. And that and then, we were kind of under a time crunch when they recommend that when you decide to do this, you find a tasting test, which is step two. Um, and schedule that because there's not a lot of tests and there's not a lot of seats available. And they're all over, not over all over the country, they're all over the world. So uh, like in February, there might be one in Portugal and one in Israel and one in England and one in New Jersey. If maybe, so you have to lucky. find something that you can get to. And that's um, kind of a good thing because then you're committed. Like you've already, none of this is big money. You're talking 20 bucks here, 30 bucks there. The, the real money you spend is on all the beer you have to buy <laughs> for, the, for the practice, the practice evaluations. But so but, we were under the wire. We had to finish, you have to finish the entrance exam before you can go to the tasting exam. Um, we gave ourselves about two months to prepare, which sounded like a lot from the outset, but we used every minute of those we did. two months. And I think we both passed the entrance exam on the 6th. And our tasting was on the ninth. Right. So, so and we had to have that done because yeah. our seat could go to someone else who had already passed the exam if we were unable to get through but it. But it's kind of a good thing once you, you know, the the exams are so infrequent and geographically spread all over the place that once you commit to one, you find one that's kind of nearby and you commit. Well, that's then you're committed, and it's really good motivation. And by nearby. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I was speaking to people after we took our tasting test, and one was from Florida and had flown up, and one was from Columbia, South Carolina. Wow, I didn't realize and that. And had driven up. I didn't realize that, yeah. So they're, that they're, was their idea of nearby. Yeah, they're, not, they're, they, they're not held that often, and they're all very, very small. So once you get that seat, it's like you gotta, you got to do this. We have a bunch of other tips. We, uh, we're going to get to that. We passed the online exam at the 11th hour, <laughs> and then we uh, qualified for the tasting exam. Uh, we're going to show you uh, before and after the tasting exam. Uh, the only thing I'm going to say about that is we spent a lot of time sitting at this table and others tasting beer, evaluating the beer, learning how to fill out the form. You, you kind of have to know how to do it just so, because if you don't do it just so, you lose points. Why does this remind me of Christmas? Do you get orange? No. Yeah, me neither. Do you get roses? No. Mm, this is one where sherry is appropriate. Okay, so maybe that's my Christmas. Maybe. And again, time. Like 10, we were giving ourselves like 10 minutes. Right. To do when a When we were practicing. Because you really have 15, right? In the exam, there was 15. You six beers, 15 minutes per beer, theoretically. There was a couple, I think, where we had more time because something, I don't know what was going on back there, but there was... That's the that's the structure. Fifteen minutes for beer. So you just got to bang these things out. You got to know how to do it. You got to know how to fill out the form and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we'll show you that. We'll show you the testing exam before and after. Can't videotape in the exam, obviously. And we'll be right back. Look at the back window. It says brew. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I parked here. Perfect. All right. This is it. We're back at Ashton Brewery, interestingly enough, but not to drink beer. Well, kind of, sort of. No, not to drink or beer. Or tasting beer. <laughs> we are evaluating beer. Today's our tasting exam for the BJCP certification. Not certification. What is it? Um, yeah, we would be certified. No. I don't think so. We're apprentices now. Yeah. And we would become recognized, I think. I think we would become, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, recognized. We'd become recognized if, if, if we pass the mm -hmm. test today. Yeah, Big if, if we pass the test today. So, how do you feel? Um, I'm ready to do it. Yeah. Learned a lot. We did learn a lot. It, even if we flunk, it's, it will have been worth it. It was a good experience. We learned a lot. We, we learned to appreciate beers that we didn't even think we liked. Like, we, we were kind of, um, I don't know, snobby the right word? No, I, it's not the right word. It's not the right word. I was just kind of focused on drinking stuff that I knew I liked. Yeah. But now it, this has totally expanded my horizons on what I'm willing to try, and right. Um, hopefully, I'm going to enjoy a lot more varieties. The goal, of course, was to come up with a better way to describe the beers that we try, 
uh, and learn the vocabulary. Uh, we're, we're not really interested in becoming judges, in, in judging. I would do it, certainly, if somebody asked me. I'm not going to go out of my way to find a competition to judge, but this was really a learning experience. I say that now. That's what you said. <laughs> <laughs> if they ask, I will judge. Put it that way. And um, I would like to experience it, though. Yeah. I would definitely do it. Yeah. But I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. I'm just so happy that I learned so much. Well. I would encourage anybody that is really into beer to at least explore this. Right. Um, it's, there's some great resources and uh, great material. It's not easy. Yeah, there it's is. not easy. There's a, there's, a t there's a ton of stuff, almost to a fault. There's actually too much stuff. <laughs> and it's like, oh, uh, you hate to be that guy, but you're like, is this going to be on the test? <laughs> I, I feel like I should get college credits for what we've just been through. <laughs> and, and the studying and the testing and the... She's not kidding. I, you know, we both... Additional resources. Like, you look, you go through the book and you read the chapter and then there's four other books you should probably read yes. to enhance your uh, the information you've been given in the guide. Right, yeah. It's, anyway, we're uh, minutes away from the event. Of course, we can't... A lot of minutes because I'm, <laughs> I'm <laughs> compulsive and okay. had to get here we're, early. We're hours away from the event. <laughs> Not hours, just lots of minutes. But in, in best defense, they're calling for weather today, so we wanted to get here before the weather. There was no way I was going to shoot in here late. No. Yeah, you don't want to be late to your tasting test. I think that would probably um, cause some demerits. Yeah, and I, I carefully packed our mechanical pencils and erasers we have, and listen, bottle openers. Listen to this. Listen to this. And flashlights and calculators. Listen to this list. <laughs> and water. <laughs> we have water. We um, have mechanical pencils. Why? Because you can't have a cedar pencil in the test because all you'll smell is the cedar and the rubber eraser. I experienced that last night. Remember I was teasing you? Yeah. Using the wrong pencil? Using the wrong pencil. And I, I think we were, it was the Old Ale maybe. It was one of the beers that we Oh, had. and you've put down resiny and it could have been from my No, pencil. that was a total guess. Oh, okay. That had nothing to do with your pencil. <laughs> but as I'm smelling the beer, I'm thinking- I'm giving I'm, you an excuse. I'm, yeah, thanks. That's why I put <laughs> resiny. It wasn't a mistake, it was your pencil. Yeah, no, I'm not blaming that on you. I'm tasting this beer and I'm like, man, that pencil is right, right under my nose. <laughs> <laughs> and it was more the eraser than the, than the wood. Okay. But anyway, that's why we have mechanical pencils. We have calculators because it's simple arithmetic, but you assume you're going to be nervous and you're going to mess, mess up. You have to add up a bunch of numbers. And you're not allowed beer. to bring your cell phone in. Yeah. And that's why I was about to say we're videotaping this because we're not allowed to tape in there. And oh, unscented soap. You probably didn't even know you had that. I put that in the bag. You put it in the bag? Yeah. Okay. In, in case I have to wash my hands? Well, I would like to wash my hands. Okay. And But if you wash your hands with like uh, some perfumey, you know, public bathroom soap, that's going to totally mess up your experience. So it's a pretty crazy uh, thing that we're doing and, and very interesting. And we'll tell you more about it. I guess that's it. For now. We'll see you after the test. And then we'll give you our impressions of how we think we did. <laughs> <laughs> and we're doing this in dry January, so we can't even go out and have a beer Dry afterwards. January! <laughs> tip number one, don't do BJCP in dry January. That'll be one of the tips we give you later. Yeah. All right, we'll see you later. Look, free crackers. <laughs> That's the reason we did this whole BJCP Yeah, we did it for the free crackers. The free crackers. And water. <laughs> no, we brought the water. No, I think they gave no, us water. No, that's one of theirs. We did bring. We did bring, but I didn't have to open it. What do you think? It was a good experience. Um, I have no idea if I passed or not. Um, I We mostly studied tasting what beer should taste like. So when I got a beer that was like, oh God, something's wrong. I wasn't 100% sure what was wrong. But there was only one of those. And there was a couple where it was off. Well, why? Yeah, one had a little sour note. One was abysmal, but I kind of really understood that yeah, one. We, we were totally it was prepared. so abysmal that I understood that we one. We were totally prepared because we uh, we had we one did of those. an abysmal. We had one of those in our tasting panel. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say how we got it. That's for you to figure out. Um, 
But so that that was kind of hard. Oh, wait, did, can you still read your napkin? Uh, my napkin is barely visible because it's been in my pocket. So we had an alt beer in quotes. It really wasn't. It really wasn't an alt beer. It was a little was bit a, of a decoy. A red, uh, Irish red. So I probably scored it too high because it probably wasn't really. Well, it's not really alt beer, but it kind of is. Does that make any sense? It's probably not for most of the people watching this. <laughs> They've already turned it off. <laughs> like, ah, this what is, the hell are they This is too about? much beer nerdery. We don't want this. Alt beer is a German ale. And they gave us one of one of Ashton's which beers. Is, it's really an Irish red, which right? Is, well, it's an, it's, but an it's, American red? But it's brewed, is there such a thing? It's brewed with alt beer yeast. So yeah. it was kind of alt beer. So that was a that was a good decoy, yeah. I, and there was no way I was gonna say this is not all beer because to me it tasted like all beer. Because what do I know? We just <laughs> yes, you have I've to... had one all beer in my life, <laughs> you and have it to... was perfect. I had two. You have to memorize like eighty beer styles. It's not possible unless you're some kind of savant, or you do it a lot. I guess. Um, yeah, this is barely visible. Uh, Dunkel's Vice. Dunkel's Vice, which I remembered had wheat. <laughs> so when it was cloudy, I was like, okay, that's appropriate. Yeah, for the style. cloudy was appropriate. The weird, it was really banana y, which is appropriate for that beer. But it had a little sour note, which I detected and I, I wrote on the thing, but I couldn't remember if that was appropriate to the style or not. That would be in the book that you're not allowed to have during the test. And I remembered that it had sour, but I didn't know how much. So. Yeah. I didn't even comment so on it at all. We don't all. know how we did on that one. And then there was a Saison. The Saison was good, and fortunately, it, it, I scored it for what it was, which is a decent Saison. It wasn't Saison from the seed in Atlantic City, which is, like, perfect. Like, Saison you would get if you were in Belgium. But it was very good, and it wasn't imitation Saison. A lot of it, when you go to a brewery, a microbrewery, they'll have a Saison on. It's like, okay, this is, like... This is a saison like fluid. It's not really saison, but this was good. It was good. But it was too uh, fermenty, which is, and I, I called that. I said the fermentation character was slightly out of balance with the grain character. So I got that one. I think I got that one right. I don't remember any of my scores though, so that doesn't help. And then the fourth one, or fifth one maybe, was a strong bitter. Which was not strong bitter. In any no. sense of the word, I I marked that one down pretty pretty harshly, but not because it was bad, because it seemed to be out of style. Uh, I may have been wrong about that, because if at the end the not the proctor the host the proctor was there, but to his credit he never said a word. Um, we didn't know who he was. Until we didn't afterwards. know it until the end, but the host. At the end, went through every all the beers and the consensus score. The consensus score. Like today. Today, no, from the the people that will be grading it. Oh, the people that will be grading yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. like where where they said thirty nine, and I got thirty nine. I'm right on target. Oh, so how, how far off were we? Well, you well, don't, well you don't I really don't right? know because this is what I wrote my notes on because I wasn't <laughs> sure if I I was allowed to have notes. Yeah, we really weren't um, sure. In pencil, it's basically invisible <laughs> <laughs> like it would take a, you know a dexter to figure out what it says on here <laughs> the saison was good saison was good i i my point my score was exactly the same as the judges oh, on the saison See, i don't remember any my, of my score. score was exactly the same on the horrible well the bad IPA. beer yes but beth and i both rated it at 15 which is um polite not, uh, polite because <laughs> you say if you get a really, really bad beer in a competition, they tell you, they say don't give it any less than 13 at a courtesy to the brewer, because the brewer may have tried his or her best to make this beer and it's not good. Uh, <laughs> we know what that's like. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> Threw away that tea. Uh, never mind. We haven't thrown it away yet. <laughs> Anybody wants to try it, it's still available. But hurry, because we're dumping it. No, soon. I was gonna say throw away the t-shirt. <laughs> Been there, done that, throw away the t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh you brew for 25, 30 years, you're gonna have some bad beers. It's inevitable. And that, that was, was a great experience. But there was one before that. I know. What was I, the second what was I don't the, know because I wrote it on a piece of paper and the, pencil. What was the penultimate beer? 
penultimate. I oh, think it was, was the, the English the double, uh, Dunkelbach. Oh. Which I totally screwed up because no, okay. in my brain, I couldn't. You don't think that was the second to last? I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> there was a Dunkelbach in the mix. And I'm like, ah, oh, Dunkelbach, double buck. I, I had no idea. So I basically scored it as a double buck. So it's probably, my score is probably completely wrong. Because at the end of the thing, the, the host, who's the brewer, the owner and head brewer at Ashton said, yeah, this is the buck that before we spice it or something or other. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, I screwed that one up. So who knows? We don't know. We're good. We passed the well, online exam. <laughs> we'll know in a few weeks whether we'll we pass this part. But, yeah. So it was. Uh, but we learned a lot. We learned And that a lot. was the objective. And like becoming judges was not the objective. No. That was a secondary thing. Yes. But we learned a lot. We did. It was good. Yep. All right. Cheers. If you want to do the BJCP, we have some advice for you. Now, we're not experts. We just went through it, so it's all fresh in our memory for the, for what that's worth. Uh, number one, don't do it in dry January. <laughs> like, you really, you don't have to drink a lot of beer, but you have to drink a lot of different beers. Styles. Styles. Yeah, as I said, three times 26, whatever that is. That's, yeah. a, that's a minimum, because some of the categories have four beers in them. Yeah, it's, if you're trying not to drink at all in dry January, you're going to have problems. So that's why we're calling it damp January, because... We were still, we had tons of beers. The other thing is don't do it over Christmas. <laughs> like we thought we had all this time and then Christmas is like <laughs> big time suck. And or any other major yeah, big holiday. holiday or huge event. family event. Whatever. Anything that's going to suck yeah. a lot of time away from your yeah. ability to focus. Because then it's like bought all these beers, you know, state line liquors. That, that's a place you know, need to know about if you're on the East Coast. In Elkton, Maryland, they sell any six pack, four pack in the entire store. You can grab one. Everything's for sale singly. Because, you know, we're not big Weiss beer people, so we didn't want to buy a six pack of Hefeweizen. We bought a couple of bottles, different styles. Um, and you end up with all these little, all these single bottles of beer and cans every year, and it's like you got to get through these. And it's like, it's a tough job. Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> And, but it was such a great experience because we, you kind of get into your comfort zone. Like we're, I, we're IPA people and we're New England IPA people. And like that's where we gravitate. Like we're always going to go for the IPA. But when you do this, you have to drink English stout and Irish stout and American stout and American porter and English porter. Czech lager. And Czech German lager. everything. Yeah. Belgian, Belgian everything. Belgian everything. Flanders red. Never had a Flanders red in my life. Oud Brun. Oud Brun. <laughs> Just fun to say. Oud Brun. Oud Brun. I think it's Oud Brun. We don't know. We don't know how to say it. <laughs> and that was really the value of this experience. Because all of a sudden you're learning stuff. You're not only learning all this technical stuff about how beer beer works, but you're learning all these really styles that you may not. I'm, there's no way. If I went into a microbrewery and they had Flanders Red, I probably wouldn't order it. I might ask for I a I still sip. wouldn't order it. Well, yeah, she wasn't a fan. <laughs> Really interesting beer. They call it the Burgundy of Belgium because it, it tastes so much like red wine. Very, very interesting beer. And I'm, I never would have had that experience. We haven't been to Belgium yet. That's on our list, mm -hmm. on our big, big bucket list. What else? Um, give yourself plenty of time to prepare. Um, we all have jobs and families and other responsibilities, but it's a big time commitment to prepare for this. Um, Take the test right away. Uh, we kept saying, we're not ready yet, we're not ready yet, we're not ready yet. We weren't ready, but we would have been more ready had we taken it at least once, because then you know what you're in for. This thing is, <laughs> it's a riot. I mean, it's a sprint. And they offer a buy three tests for the price of two. Yeah. So for 20 bucks, you get three attempts. And we, I wish we'd done one test knowing we were going to fail early on just to see what we were in for. Because I got where to focus, all these how to focus. flashcards on my phone and all studying flash all this stuff. Flashcards there. These flashcards were, were handy. Um, you know, half the, half the stuff you're studying isn't, isn't going to be on the test because it's this monstrous uh, question pool and it's totally random which questions you're going to get. What else? Um, Rate every beer you drink, yeah. So like, show the rating sheet? Or? So yeah, I'll put a close-up of this. That's the rating sheet. Um, 
every time you drink a beer anywhere, basically, and this gets really nerdy. <laughs> Some people kind of think it's cool. Like, what are you guys doing? Well, we're studying for this test. We have to do this. And it does make people at the brewery a little bit nervous <laughs> when you pull out all this paperwork. Filling out folders and <laughs> but it's like, oh, relax. And things. It's, we look like just, Department of Health inspectors. Yeah, yeah, relax. We're just we're studying for this crazy test. And that was helpful. And then the, the main thing with that is because you're, what we did is we tried to buy a lot of classic examples, even the, some of the ones that are listed in the book. But that only is half the story because you also have to kind of know how to taste bad beer, how to evaluate mediocre beer, bad beer, beer that's got something wrong with it. Fortunately, we had a little bit of that available to us, just a yeah. little, half a barrel. <laughs> but they identify, one of the things you learn is the flaws, the faults that can be in beer. Oh yeah, these are the, that's these. Um, so, Musty. like we met, I memorized Grassy. all these cards, Seat where they come from, what it tastes like. <laughs> but when I was given a beer, Bitterness. That had a weird taste. Alcoholic. That's harder to pick There's a out. Big stack of these. So it takes a lot of sensory development, um, getting to know what things taste like and what things smell like. Um, so I guess that's a good segue. Uh, some of the way that we prepped is we got this standards kit. I got this as a was it? I gave it to you for your, I gave it to you for your birthday. Birthday gift. Very that was selfish. Great birthday gift. So that it's a bunch of um, th these are good flavors. These aren't and aromas just, for the most part. Just for hops. For, of what hops smell like. Yeah, and they, they sell these kits for mm. the faults, they sell them, for, there's all kinds of stuff. You, you can, can get fault kits. You can spend a lot of money on these things. You don't have to spend a lot of money to do this, but you can. Herbal, I'm gonna say oregano, because I remember that. Okay. <laughs> um, and we ate a lot of malt. We did. We went to the homebrew store and got a whole bunch of little, you know, two ounce bags of Various malts. Because one of the things uh, they'll, <laughs> they'll say, uh, burnt, burnt toast is not appropriate in this style. Burnt toast is from black malt, for the most part. A little bit from roast, but more for black. So I go, okay, you know what burnt toast tastes like, but what do you know what black malt tastes like? Well, you grab a handful and you taste it and you're there. And that was, that was super helpful. That's, that, was a, that was a really good thing to do. And very inexpensive. This is like four bucks worth of malt, this whole box. And that's so, just from yeah. the homebrew store. Maybe maybe a little bit more, but not much. So. Uh, digestive biscuits. <laughs> yeah, because one of the descriptors for malt Bisky. is biscuity. And, and when it, the question is, does that mean biscuits like cookies in England, or does it mean biscuits like sausage and biscuits? Um, this is what it means. So I kind of remembered what they tasted like because I'd had them, but not really. So we went and grabbed a we box. We found a box. So you can go a little nuts. And that leads to Jen Blair. Jen Blair was a huge secret weapon in, in all this. And she goes into this stuff in much more detail. Jen Blair is uh, dedicated to women in brewing, helping women become beer judges. Uh, she's amazing. And she has put up a huge series of videos on YouTube, which are free to access. We'll put the link in. That was a huge, huge help. Mostly for the tasting, but you do pick up stuff for the written, is not written, I'm sorry, the, uh, the online. Yep. The entrance exam. Because at one point, we got the question, true or false, Munich Hellas should be grainy sweet. And I said, true, Jen Blair. Like I remembered because it was one of the things that Jen said. What else? Um, Learn the faults. Yeah, we went through the, that was all these. And uh, work, if you can work with a group or, or we had each other, but a lot of the people at our tasting exam uh, were all from the same homebrew club. Yeah. So they had been sharing each other's homebrew and working together, studying together, learning the faults together, and I'm sure that was very beneficial. The other thing that was a huge help is uh, uh, an online app called Beer Omatic on Beer Syndicate, and basically it's the whole st the whole style book that's read, right? Yep. The style book uh, in a, almost a database format. You can bring up one, two, up to three different beers and just look at them right across parallel because a lot of the questions on the test are... Compare a Munich Dunkel to a Doppelbach. Correct. And if you don't... I mean, some people can memorize all these styles. We're, I'm not one of those people. I don't Maybe know about in my you. 20s. <laughs> not so, now. Yeah, it was, for us it was more like know how to find it as quickly as possible because you don't have any time. And um, through, they also have a mock exam, which was helpful, but um, it, 
what happened, what we found is that we kept getting the same questions. So that was when we said, Beth said, we just got to take the real exam. We just got to do it. And she was right, and we should have done that a lot earlier. I'm sure we're going to remember more stuff after we turn off the camera, but that's about it. That's right. We can always turn the camera back on. <laughs> uh, it was quite a trip. I'm glad I did it. Very I'm gl glad, I, glad did. I don't have to do it again. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, well worth it. I mean, uh, again, I'm not crazy interested in becoming a judge. I'll do it if anybody asks. Uh, but really, it was, it was to get a better handle on how beer is evaluated and, and described, really, the vocabulary of, of beer. And it was, it was, a lot of it was fun. It was, a lot of it was stressful, but most of it was fun. Yep. Beer drinking was fun. Yep. And there's so many more beers that I'm willing to try when I go out to breweries now. Definitely, um, uh, definitely broadens your so horizons. So I'm so glad I did it. Yep. Good? I think so. Where's your beer? It's right here. Where's your faux My beer? fake beer. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>